saints within the Orthodox Church, as well as with the Roman Catholic Church, occupy a really important place, uh, not just in the liturgical calendar, but also in the piety of the Orthodox Christian of Orthodox Christians in the Orthodox Church. The saints are problematic, though, for non-Orthodox, is simply this whole concept of intercession. That is to say, Christ came as the mediator between God and humanity. He is the God-man. He is the ultimate mediator. And in that sense, for Protestant Christians in particular, there is the, the notion of the saint as mediator uh, is highly uh, problematic, and rightfully so, because from the Orthodox perspective, on the saints, we don't see the saint as a mediator. The saint, there is only one mediator, that's Christ himself. The saint is not a mediator. The saint is not also someone who has an abundance, sort of a bank account of grace, so to speak, that Martin Luther and the reformers of the 16th century understood Roman Catholic piety towards towards the saints. Because in the 16th century, uh, not just the saints weren't simply just liturgical, weren't simply just were commemorated liturgically and occupied, you know, an important spiritual aspect in the lives of Roman Catholics in the West in the 16th century. But there was also a legalistic aspect to the veneration of the saints or, or the cult of the saints, uh, if you want to use that term. And that is to say that um, the whole notion of uh, purgatory. For the Protestant Reformation, one of the main challenges that they faced when they came with the Roman Catholic Church was this whole notion of indulgences. And that is to say, how does one, um, how does one overcome suffering um, or how does one pay back their sins, not just in this life, but in purgatory in order to get into heaven? And one answer that medieval Catholicism had, and this I'm simplifying this, but this is certainly how many reformers understood this. One answer was that the saints have extra grace, and they can give us from their extra grace. They can give the grace that you and I don't quite have that will get us either out of purgatory or will reduce our time in purgatory or maybe forgive our sins here on this earth. That notion in Orthodox Christianity is completely foreign. In fact, it's not found anywhere in the understanding of the saints in the Orthodox Church. In the Orthodox Church, the saint is a deceased yet living friend who prays for you. And in that sense, it's not unlike a Protestant gathering of individuals of a prayer group that has comes together on a Thursday night and says, okay, who are we praying for tonight? And somebody says, well, you know, my sister-in-law is ill, and her name is Susan. We're praying for Susan tonight. And we enter into an intense prayer group for Susan. Or maybe a, a prayer sort of phone-a-thon or email-a-thon where you email your friends or you phone your friends and say, okay, we have to pray for Paul, who is sick right now. In some sense, that's what the saints do for us. They're deceased Christians yet living, which is a really important part for us, who do what we as Christians do and what we're called to do while we're alive, and that is to pray for others, to intercede for others. We're always called to help other people. And oftentimes we can't help other people because we can't physically be there for them, but we pray for them. And that's one way that all Christians help others. That's what the saints do in the Orthodox Church. They pray for us. They pray for others. One might say, as a non-Orthodox, and say, well, they're dead. Right? They're dead. Fine. Their soul lives on. Uh, just as any Christian would say that, you know, after the second coming of Christ, Christian isn't dead. The soul is alive and well. The soul is eternal in, Christ in Christianity. And so in that sense, um, the saint is simply living out the eternity of one's life, that is, of one's soul, in an opportunity, in an attempt to intercede to pray for somebody. We don't pray to saints in the Orthodox Church um, for salvation in the sense that, oh, save me, or, or um, God's the one that saves. But we can pray to the saints for guidance, for assistance, for, for a simple prayer to say, St. Demetrius, St. John, St. Barbara, pray for me as if I would pick up the phone and say to my cousin, to my mother, to my best friend, pray for me, I'm not doing very well right now. It's the same concept. 
One of the challenges, though, is that what happens from the outside, when one looks from the outside into the Orthodox Church, they come into the Orthodox Church, they see an icon, they see a feast day dedicated to a saint, and they think all of a sudden that an Orthodox is worshiping, venerating, um, almost making a god out of the saints. It On the outside can look like that. Um, I will grant that. However, what this really suggests and, and emphasizes is the friendship, the closeness, that the saint is a friend of God, just like your next door neighbor who you consider a very pious person, you might consider a friend of God, and you might go to them for intercession. But just like your next door neighbor, the saints are human as well. And one of the remarkable messages, I would say, about the lives of the saints uh, as one reads the various lives of the saints throughout the history of Christianity, is the me- two messages. The message that God can act wondrously in anybody's life and that God's grace is not limited. In other words, just because you go to church every Sunday, God's going to treat you better. God's grace is going to be wherever it's going to be because God wills it. And that comes out all the time in the lives of the saints. Let me give you an example. Life of St. Theodore of Sicyon. He was uh, a young boy who grew up in a village in south, southwestern modern-day Turkey, southwestern Asia Minor. Uh, he becomes a bishop, um, travels a lot, does a lot of miraculous healings. But what's remarkable about St. Theodore is uh, is his conception. His mother ran a brothel. His mother owned a tavern with her mother, and she was single at the time. And they, they were on a major highway in this, val- in this village where they lived. And one day, a gentleman came through, sat and ate, ate dinner there, saw St. Theodore's mother, the future St. Theodore's mother, paid the money, they went upstairs, they had sex. They conceived Theodore. So here, and then Theodore is conceived. Theodore is grows up. He eventually gets his mom and his and his grandmother to stop living this sort of life. But the point is, is that here's a saint in the church who was conceived, number one, out of wedlock, but not only out of wedlock, uh, but um, in sin. We would all say that he was conceived in sin, but God's power is greater than anything. So, so that's just one example. There are numerous examples. Now, you might say, well, Jim, how do we know this? You know, how do, how do you know that this is authentic or true? Okay, we can always ask that question about almost anything we read from history. It's not the point. The point is the message that God's grace is so powerful, that his love is so great, that he can act where and when he wills to act. The second message, I would say, that comes out of the lives of the saints is a message of trust. The saints are saints, and if you read the lives of the saints closely, they're saints because they let go and they let God. They trusted in God. They trusted their lives. They put their lives in God's hands and said, not my will, Lord, but your will. And our perfect example of that obviously comes out of the, out of the Gospel of Luke, where Mary says, "Not my, my not my will, Lord, but your will," and that giving up of one's will and trusting in God's call or God's decision on how to use you as a human being for the greater good of the world. That's what a saint is. A saint is someone who has trusted in God so much that they've let go of their life. And they've let God run, not run, but let God into into their lives. And once you get past all the miraculous and all the things that take place in the lives of saints, and there are multiple miraculous things that we as 21st century individuals read and go, eh, didn't happen. And that automatically turns us off from these lives. But if we can get past that, and if you read closely, you will see that the real message is, is their trust in God. And that's a message any Christian, Orthodox or non-Orthodox, needs, can, can use and can use as an example to, to live by.